The outspoken president of the Philippines has dismissed an offer to buy U.S.-made F-16 fighter jets, saying buying them would be, quote, utterly useless. We do not need any M-16s. It would be utterly useless to, to buy it. But I need attack helicopters and small planes for the counterinsurgency. Rodrigo Duterte made the offer signed by Washington's top brass public during a military ceremony. The president then highlighted that the letter from the U.S. Defense and State Secretaries came after officials in Washington had made humiliating comments about his country's crackdown on drugs. Okay, let's get into some of this. I'm happy to say that security analyst Charles Shoebridge joins us live on the program. Hi there, Charles. Is there more, do you think, to President Duterte saying the F-16 just isn't what he needs right now? Was his rejection deliberate for other reasons aside from the anti-drug operations and it not being suitable for such operations? I mean, yes, he has a point with that from the operational uh, military perspective. Uh, F-16s are not much use in the immediate threats that he perceives the Philippines faces and he perceives those uh, with good reason. But there is, I think, more to this. Um, many countries uh, around the world are questioning, first of all, their relationship with the United States, including countries that uh, hitherto were considered um, allies that couldn't be separated. The Philippines one of those. Turkey you mentioned as well, because we've got a situation, of course, where uh, up until recently, uh, you would buy your weapons from the U.S., largely based on the fact that you were given many weapons beforehand and therefore uh, it's, you were effectively uh, suckered in in a certain way to um, then keeping that supply chain going, um, benefiting, of course, arms sales from the U.S. But also we've got here the fact that uh, the U.S. especially, but other countries as well, they've long seen... Uh, arms sales as, if you like, an arm of diplomacy, and indeed, of course, diplomacy is an arm of arms sales, uh, largely uh, intended to boost arms sales, and there's many examples of that, of course, with the United States. So what we've got here is a situation where I think through the vehicle of arms supplies and um, arms procurement, um, the president here of the Philippines is lashing out at the U.S., given that there have been, um, shall we say, uh, he's basically rejecting a conciliatory letter that you've already described that came from very high level within the US um, that itself was an attempt to uh, smooth the waters given yeah. uh, the rather provocative letter that preceded that. that. That's a question in itself, isn't it? Because why do you think the US <clears throat> was almost assuming that Manila would just uh, accept what uh, the US was offering there, the F-16s? Also considering Duterte's domestic war and drugs faced a lot of criticism from the US, didn't it? Yes, that's right. But let's not forget that uh, human rights is often cited by the US as a reason why um, it's not going to cooperate with certain countries or why it's going to um, uh, not uh, deliver arms. Um, but of course, we know from very prominent examples. Israel is one, um, uh, Saudi Arabia another, where the United States is absolutely prepared to supply, in the state case of Israel, of course, not sell, but actually give weapons, very advanced weapons, knowing absolutely that they will be used uh, almost certainly to kill civilians, for example, in Gaza or in Yemen. And so really that, I think, has to be taken with a pinch of salt. What we're talking about here is trying to use arms sales as a means of leverage to control the foreign policies of other countries. And that's exactly what the Philippine president, regardless of whether one likes him or not or his policies yeah. that he has correctly identified that America uses this to pressure its um, uh, allies into staying as allies. After all, the letter that uh, the Philippines president objected to basically said, don't forget that arms sales is about more than capability. It's also about a relationship. You buy American just, weapons, you're investing that, in a relationship. Just on that, where, where does it go now, Charles? Because does Duterte's statement mean that the Philippines is considering developing better relationships with other arms suppliers? And I point out Russia here because it's been noted that the Philippine Defense Secretary is planning to meet his Russian counterpart this week. That's just one example, though. Yes, it makes sense. I think in Turkey itself, you mentioned earlier in your package, is also playing this diplomatic game very skillfully. In other words, uh, rather than giving the signal to the United States that we're with you regardless, actually uh, playing the field to some degree and actually saying we're going to uh, diversify not only our weapon systems, but also our diplomacy. We want to be allies with more than one country. And of course, that is also a way of extracting concessions from the opposing side. After all, um, you've got a situation here where there's already a small defence relationship between 
Russia and the Philippines. For example, uh, Russia has already supplied small arms to the Philippines. And of course, um, you've got this situation now where in other markets, Turkey, India and so on, where very advanced weapon systems mm. are attractive to countries. And they are going to resent very much, I think, being told by the United States, uh, supposed allies of them, that they should or should not buy weapon systems. Uh, after all, buying a weapon system as other aspects of foreign policy is a question of the sovereign rights of countries. And a lot of American officials seem to forget that. Always food for thought when you're on the programme. Security analyst Charles Shoebridge, thank you.